What's up everybody? I'm Drew Mazurik with Universal Audio. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a detailed walkthrough of the new UAD A-Type Multiband Dynamic Enhancer plugin. This processor has humble beginnings that go back to the late 60s as a noise reduction system and a rich history of creative professionals putting it to use in really cool and unique ways. For more on that history, be sure to watch the launch video and read the excellent user manual. In the first section of this video, I'll walk you through the basic controls and operation with some examples mixed in, and then we'll dig in deep and look at some of the cool advanced things this plugin can do. And then lastly, towards the end, I'll show you the impact it can have on an entire mix. Let's dive right in. So let's start off with the user interface. The original units were fairly nondescript without a lot of forward facing controls as they had one job, noise reduction, and they were often in the machine room. So for our user interface, we decided to mimic the Dolby A cartridge tester. This was the inspiration for the two large knobs controlling amount and mix. Amount is a level compensated control that increases the effect and mix, of course, blends it in with the unprocessed signal. On the original hardware, the push buttons were used for various functions, so we decided to repurpose them in the plugin as our basic operational modes. Another prominent part of the interface is the super cool old school meter below the push buttons. It'll show you input level or gain reduction depending on its toggle switch. To the left of that, we have the sidechain filter button, which has three positions, off, high pass, and a tilt filter. More on that later. And underneath of the mix knob is the power button, which is its internal bypass. You can also bypass the process by toggling the mode buttons to an unlit state. One thing I wanna draw your attention to right away is in the upper right hand corner above the mix knob. If you hover the mouse over the letter I, you can toggle information mode on and off. This will be super helpful as you're learning what each control does. Lastly, we have the open and close button that toggles circuit mods view. This is where all of the deep modification settings are that we'll cover later in this video. So let's keep it closed for now and talk about getting started fast using the default preset and the basic operational mode buttons. An important thing to note right up front is that A-Type is not generating harmonic content like other processors. Rather, think of it as a vintage multi-band dynamic EQ that is bringing out low-level detail and content that is already there in a very unique way. The original intent for Dolby A was noise reduction when recording to tape. It had an encode process, which is what excite mode is, and a decode process, which is what expand mode is. So the idea was you would excite or boost the high frequencies during recording, and then downwardly expand those frequencies along with the tape hiss during the playback process. This was known as companding. This is a very simplified explanation, of course, so be sure to see the user manual for all the nitty gritty details. So the first thing people realized was if you just did the encode or excite part of the process, you would add amazing clarity and detail to any source. So A-Type's default settings mimic this trick and are a great starting point for adding sparkle and vibe to any source. It's using excite mode with the mix knob all the way up and the amount set to 29%. If the effect is too much, don't worry, you can back off the amount. I also wanna draw your attention to the clickable grease pencil marks for max amount and a mix of 25%. These are also great starting points that match the calibrated hardware. Let's hear this in action on some drum room mics and roads from a session that I recorded recently here at the studio.
it's amazing how much life it injected into these tracks. That Rhodes got super three-dimensional with lots of front-to-back depth and enhanced clarity and detail. And those drum room mics are now contributing to the high-end articulation of my drums in a really cool way. Let's click the expand button. This puts A-Type into the decode mode that's designed to work with excite mode for noise reduction. In fact, both the encode and decode mode of A-Type are capable of perfectly specced Dolby A noise reduction or tape transfers using the plugin presets we provide. The grease pencil marks here are the settings for this function. For more on this, be sure to check out James Santiago's transfer project that he talks about in the launch video. But again, engineers found ways of using it for creative purposes. In a modern workflow, it's a blend of dynamic expansion, transient shaping, and noise reduction. Let's check it out on this guitar subgroup. These guitar parts are a little bit bright and spiky and have some amp noise in them. Check out how A-Type in expand mode was able to smooth them out a bit. Next, let's click the air button. You'll notice that the cartridge has changed to modified. Up until this point, we have been exploring cool things you can do with the standard encode, decode, or excite, or expand processes of the original hardware. But creative people quickly realized by tinkering, or perhaps by accident, if you modified the cards, you could do some really cool things. Air mode is the first of these circuit mods that we'll talk about. It disables the low bands and therefore impacts the high frequencies only, adding an incredible airy, sparkly brightness to whatever you put through it. Again, you can click on the grease pencil marks for some great starting points. The amount is set to 100, but that mix knob is only 12%. A little bit goes a long way. With air, the amount knob is how driven or saturated the top end will be and mix is the blend. Let's hear this on some drum overheads and on some vocals. That made those overheads and vocals sound awesome. They're going to have the perfect amount of musical sparkle to cut through a mix with tons of control using the amount and mix controls. Let's click on the crush button now. You'll notice that the cartridge has changed again. This time it says single band. This is UA's own unique take at modifying the circuit, turning it into a single band hyper compressor with an aggressive yet transparent response. This thing is my new go-to for parallel compression for sure. Be sure to play around with the amount and mix knobs like you would in most any parallel compression scenario. Let's build on the room mic example we heard earlier. They already have the Excite process on them, but let's add Crush. And for easy 50-50 parallel compression, you can click the Mix button here. Let's check it out. Next up is gated mode. It's the same as crush, but preceded by a simple gate. It's really useful for adding dramatic gated room effects. In this mode, a mount controls both the compressor and the gate's threshold. 
And the mix control controls the wet dry compression, but not the amount of gating. Let's listen to how we can change up this percussion loop to make it groove more or maybe be a little bit less busy. I'm sure you'll find lots of creative uses for this mode. Before we move on to the more advanced aspects of A-Type, let's talk about the sidechain filter and how it impacts what A-Type is doing. Using pink noise, which is all frequencies with equal energy, we can see that using the factory default, we get approximately 6 dB of gain reduction with the sidechain filter off. When I click to turn on the high pass filter, you'll see that the gain reduction goes down since some low end is removed from the detection circuit. And when I click it again to turn on the tilt filter, we get way more gain reduction since the filter is making the processor sensitive to higher frequencies. This allows us to tailor A-Type's reaction to whatever we put through it, making it more useful in more situations. So now that we've covered the basic controls and operation, Let's expose circuit mod view again and look at ways we can interact with and modify all of the preceding operational modes we just discussed. Moving from left to right, we have the four to one button, which toggles a type between its default dynamic ratio mode and a fixed four to one ratio. Excite, expand and air use the default variable setting, whereas crush and gated use four to one, but you can easily experiment using either with whatever mode you like. Four to one mode allows for a more consistent compression behavior, whereas dynamic ratio mode allows it to be more gentle at lower amount settings or more aggressive at higher amount settings. Below that is the side chain link button, which links the detection circuit between the left and right channels for stereo operation. If you're using this in mono, that will be fixed off. This control ensures that the same amount of gain reduction is applied to the left channel and the right channel so that your stereo image doesn't shift. Generally, you're going to want this on. However, having it off is a long time creative tool for possibly a wider image. Be sure to experiment and see what you think. Then we have knee and release, which allows us to modify the compression behavior in each of the modes. For knee, I can set it softer for softer transients or harder for a more aggressive transient response. And release is what you'd expect from any compressor, allowing me to control when it lets go. In order to highlight and demo these parameters, let's put a type in crush mode and listen to what it does on these room mics. Notice the awesome impact the knee control has on these drums. And release allows me to smooth out the effect or have it let go quickly for more aggression. In the middle, we have the multiband level and crossover controls. These are mode dependent with excite and expand having access to all four bands and air mode having access to two. And of course, crush and gated have none since they are single band. These allow you to modify and customize the tonality of the effect. Check out some of the things that you can do with these controls. Let's check out these room mics as an example. Perhaps I want them to have less bottom end or maybe less silky top end, or maybe I want to do a mid range cut and accentuate the top and the bottom. Let's check it out.
I love how much control it gives me over the effect. Or maybe you want to have a little fun with a real B3 and accentuate its vibrato. And then we have an output control, which allows us to compensate for any level changes induced during the process. Next is the headroom screw for more gain staging control. Since A-Type's effect is very much input dependent, this allows you to custom tailor its reaction to your tracks beyond what the amount knob is capable of. So for example, if the amount knob is set very low and you want even less effect, turn the headroom screw counterclockwise. Or if the amount knob is already pretty high and you want even more effect, you can turn the headroom screw clockwise. Another way to think about it is that the headroom screw is a coarse adjustment and the amount knob is a finer one. Next up is the AutoCal button and its LED. When AutoCal is on, the LED will be green. It's in charge of the circuit mod parameters, including crossover frequencies and gains, as well as ratio, knee, and release. As you switch from mode to mode, you'll notice that these parameters are changed for you. So you're always experiencing the correct or calibrated settings for the given mode. This ensures that you don't unintentionally lose the default behavior as you switch from mode to mode. You can disable AutoCal and the LED will turn off. This allows you to explore how the current settings might sound in a different mode. With AutoCal on, the moment you alter one of these parameters, changing it from its calibrated setting, the LED will turn red, letting you know. As you scroll through the awesome presets that come with A-Type, you'll see that many are stored with AutoCal on and many deviate from those settings to create some really cool sounds. Up until this point, I've been playing you isolated examples, so I wanted to give you a global A-B of the impact that A-Type had on this mix. Check it out. So as you've heard, the new UAD A-Type Multiband Dynamic Enhancer plugin brings this classic processor into the modern age, and I'm sure you're going to find tons of uses for it on all of your mixes, just like I have. Be sure to like and subscribe, and hit that bell button so that you're notified of all new UA content. I'll see you next time.